welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show in which it pays to be economical with the truth. On Lemax team tonight, an athletic superstar who in 2000 was given the freedom of Wolverhampton. <laughs> Gift or punishment, you decide. <laughs> it's Denise Lewis. <laughs> and the star of Judge Rinder, who once appeared on Strictly dressed as a moth. A beautiful performance, although he did keep banging his head on the studio lights. It's Robert Rinder. <laughs> and on David Mitchell's team tonight, a TV presenter who's hosted over 1,000 episodes of his pointless show. I know how he feels. It's Richard Osman. And a comedian and presenter who had to leave her native Canada as she'd already been on both of their TV shows is Catherine Ryan. <laughs> and so we begin with round one home truths, where our panelists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, they have no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Richard, you're first up tonight. When I worked in a shoe shop, my boss was called Mr. Clog. <laughs> <laughs> Remarkably, I've had three other jobs where my boss's name was directly related <laughs> to their profession. <laughs> hmm. What? The obvious question <laughs> to ask is, uh, what were those jobs mm. and what were mm. these uh, people's names? Yeah, it is an obvious question. Is it maybe too obvious a question? Maybe go somewhere else first, just... <laughs> I want to know about the first. Just tell us one of the jobs. At school, I worked in a warehouse and the boss was called Mr. Foreman. Mr. Foreman? <laughs> okay. And what was your job? My bo Getting stuff so... down from the top shelf, yeah. obviously. <laughs> How would you rate Foreman as, as, as a boss? If he was suspicious, would he grill you? Foreman? Yeah, listen. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Why did you have so many jobs? Did you keep getting sacked? <laughs> no further questions. <laughs> what were the other two jobs? Yeah, what were the other jobs? Uh, I worked in... Do you remember the predecessor to Iceland, which was B-Jam? Yeah. My supervisor was called John Frost. Frost. <laughs> B-Jam. <laughs> you can see why B-Jam didn't last, cos people were going, why don't they just call it honey? <laughs> 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 Your final job was? Uh, well, it was my first ever job in television. Right. And that was? Uh, it was well. It was a researcher on a computer games program. Okay, and your your, your boss, boss is called? My boss is called Tony Verrill. What, what, does, what, does, what, what does Verrill mean? That's in relation what to what? Do you mean? It's a surname, but his initials were TV. <laughs> of all these bosses that you remember, Richard, who uh, who would you say was your favourite boss? What was it about that boss that made them? So well, adorable. John Frost wasn't really my boss, I, so I liked him. We had a bit more of a, uh, a, bit more of a relationship. Uh, Mr Foreman, I found that was quite stressful, so one of my first ever jobs. Uh, and Tony Verrill still works in the industry, so I, I, I will not be passing comments. Tony Verrill still works, works in, the, in industry. the industry. I've never come across him. Yeah, I've not come across Tony What have you come across him, David? Um, yeah, I think I've worked with Tony. Verrill. sure. Not 100%, but... Do you know who Tony Verrill is? I've no. Tony Verrill? No, never heard of him. Who, uh, it's weird that, that all, none of us three have heard of Tony Verrill, and yet all you three have heard of Tony Verrill. <laughs> Catherine hasn't. Catherine hasn't. Catherine has or hasn't? I haven't, but it rings a bell. Oh, <laughs> so you... <laughs> What do you think, truth what or lie? Truth or well, lie? Well, the thing is, I think you're almost certainly sort of geeky enough to keep a record of that sort of thing, and it's the type of thing that would amuse you, and you'd remember at the time. On the other hand, it's also the type of thing that you could quickly construct to be clever. It's a challenging one. What do you think? Lie? Mm, yes, I think so. I'll we'll have to say lie. You can say lie. Yeah. OK. Just because of Tony Verrill. Richard, truth or lie? It is... a lie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes, it's a lie. Richard's never worked in a shoe shop with Mr Clog. Denise, you're next. Mine says possession. Ah, OK. Under your desk is a box. box. If you, um, take the object out of the box first and then... Read the card, please. This is my lucky mascot. When competing, I always made sure he travelled in an unzipped bag so he could poke his head out and breathe. Mm. David's team. <laughs> what's, uh, what's his name? 
His name's Egbert. 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 And when did you acquire Egbert? About the age of 14. I noticed you said that you'd keep the zip open so he could breathe, which is very caring and lovely. But, of course, ever since the show started, he's been in that box <laughs> with, with the lid. <laughs> the lid. <laughs> So when, when did you first take it? So presumably he brings you luck in uh, sporting endeavour. I think it was just companionship. You know, I'm an only child and um, travelling, you know, as a, as a junior athlete on my own, it, it can be a bit lonely. I, I can understand why, you know, uh, it's nice to have familiar objects. And, but yeah. at the age of 14, that's quite late to get a teddy bear. <laughs> I wasn't given any cuddly toys at that age, and I was oh, very oh, so no. clear yes. to anybody <laughs> watching <laughs> that you were never given a cuddly toy at that or any age. Have you ever put any of your gold medals around his neck and taken a photograph? If I had I a gold medal, yeah. I'd put it around everything. And take uh -huh. <laughs> oh, what a horrible yeah, image yeah. that is. <laughs> All right, time to decide. No. Truth or lie? Uh, I would suspect it's true. You think true? What do you think? I don't think it's true because when Mr. Lee Mack was sort of resuscitating the bear, Denise wasn't too bothered about that. Well, let's say lie. You're going to say, say lie. We'll say it's lie. a lie. Denise Lewis, truth or lie? It's no. true! No! <laughs> Yes, it's true. Denise did keep the zip open so that Egbert could breathe. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. It's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Edward. <laughs> Robert, what is Edward to you? Uh, this is Edward, and I had such a crush on him at school that for the past 20 years, his name has been the basis for all of my passwords. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Denise, what is Ed to you? This is Edward, and he helped me pick up my car and move it after I got blocked in by Daley Thompson. And finally, Lee, what is your relationship with Edward? This is Edward. I once dressed up as his wife <laughs> so that his son would think that he'd seen his mum in the audience at the school play. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we have it. Is Edward Robert's childhood crush, Denise's car carrier, or Lee's hoax husband? David's team, where to begin? Robert. Uh, so, were you school buddies together? Not especially, because um, Edward was terribly good at sport, you see. I seem to remember Edward being terribly good at the pole vault. <laughs> <laughs> How are you still in touch with Edward? Uh, we're not. I haven't seen Edward for a number of years. In fact. How is he doing, do you think? Would you still? just say that as my fake husband, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd say he's definitely moved into a new bracket. <laughs> yeah. A very happy one. Yeah. Yes, he's doing, he's doing very well, I'd say. You know, very, very well indeed. <laughs> now, you said you haven't seen him for a number of years. No, Specifically, number of years. Specifically, when was the last time you saw him? The last time I would have seen him would probably be 1993 or 94. 1993 or 4? <laughs> But there wasn't the need for passwords until around the year 2000. Well, yes, but they then came in, and I thought, what would be more marvellous than having Edward as the basis of my passwords? Is he still the basis of your passwords? No comment. What I will say <laughs> is that um, I spent a long time, and I was bored, looking for him on Facebook and that sort of thing. And on one occasion, um, I found him and, and messaged him, and there was no reply. And I, oh, I was very that's upset horrible! About that, <laughs> and I always wondered what happened to him. And now I see. <laughs> I'm struggling with this because uh, this is a thing that is done. 
I had a crush on a boy in school and his name is the basis for my passwords as well. And I've been trying to stalk him on Facebook, <clears throat> but he doesn't exist. He's not on Facebook, which makes him even sexier. <laughs> I'm saying this so is. So you've got that exact story. Very plausible. Yeah, this is my story. His name's Luke Mate. Do you know him? Yes. You know? Luke. Luke. No, you Mate. don't. Because he was yeah, like. He lives two doors down from me. Single, newly single. No. Yeah. He works for Medicine Sans Frontieres. As he's a human rights lawyer, no. but works with them. <laughs> But he takes six months of the year off because he runs a, uh, a place for, for distressed puppies. <laughs> He's a good guy. You know what? I literally just set him up with someone last week. That's so annoying. <laughs> That's a great, thing. great guy. Head of a All guy. right. Who would you like to... Uh, it's very plausible. Who would you like yeah. to quiz next? Uh, Denise, um, explain what happened with Edward in the car and Daley Thompson. Yes, yeah, so I was parked uh, in the car park at a stadium. Which stadium? Birmingham, Alexander Stadium in Birmingham, and which car park? So, like you have just to... VIP. VIP. Okay. <laughs> it's probably the Denise Lewis car park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if you own a car in Birmingham, you're automatically a VIP anyway. <laughs> I'm in the car park, went off to work, um, had a big national championships, came back out, desperate to get back down to London, and my car was blocked, blocked in. That was Daley Thompson? That was Daley Thompson. Yeah. Well, hang on, how do we know? Let's, let's take it, say, what happens next? Well, Eddie, mm -hmm. he's an, an official. Right. You know, he used to be an athlete, because he's well stacked. What was his sport? He was actually a thrower. Of what? Discus. Uh, sorry, Discus. Discus. Are you actually... You're a BBC commentator and you called him a thrower. A thrower. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a thrower of the incredibly heavy frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, he used to, he used to compete at um, yeah. national level. OK. Didn't quite yeah. make it. Yeah. Didn't quite right. make it. It's not right. easy he to get here. to the top. Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy. Um, that's so, that's such so, a show-off thing to do. I'm, well, I'm sorry. Just, you know, I'm just it's saying... It's really, really hard to be an amazingly good athlete. <laughs> some, some people can do it, some people yeah. can't do it. Eddie, I'm but... sorry. <laughs> so there you are, Denise. You're, you're, you're blocked in. Eddie Edward really is busy. there because he's an official. He used to throw things. <laughs> when does Daly come into it? Well, his has a private registration plate, and I didn't he's notice got, he's that. He's one of those people yes. daily... What does it say? DT10. DT10, of course. DT10. Right. Of course. Fair so to do, I, need to, I need to get out of here quickly. Yes. Can you help? Yes. He said, let me go and get some of these other throwers. They said, listen, if we manoeuvre this car, swing the back out a little bit, you should be able to manoeuvre around Daly's mm -hmm. car. But, so you never met... I'm sure you have met Daly Thompson, but he never turned up during the anecdote. Couldn't find him anywhere. But it's only when I came back to the car did I realise it was his car because of the number plate. But you were looking for him before that. The person I need to talk you to need now to, is Daley to... Thompson, because if there's <laughs> someone who understands a parking crisis, <laughs> it's him. Uh, Can I just check if you two a, met? Because you need a really a good defence lawyer. No, I do. <laughs> Can I continue? Yes, please do. So Eddie came to my aid. Yeah. And helped me manoeuvre the car. Yeah. And away I went. Away you went, and, and Daley Thompson turned up presumably later. I don't know, because I didn't see him. You didn't see have him. Have you seen him since? Yeah. Yes. And have you mentioned this story to him? Yes. And, OK, that checks out. And, <laughs> that's what, that's what, did what he you say? do. Yeah, that's what did question. he say? Yeah. Oh, shut up. <gasps> he said, oh, shut yeah. up. Listen, no. I've, I've known Daley a long time. One of the first things he said to me at the age of 14... Yeah. Um, he called me... look after this bear. I <laughs> said... <laughs> All right, now, yeah. now, of course, perhaps the most plausible of all is yet to, uh... <laughs> Just remind us, Lee. This is Edward. I once dressed as his wife, so his son would think he'd seen his mum... Right. ..whilst performing in the school play. What yeah. was the play? It was actually a nativity play. OK, and what was Edward's son playing? Edward's son was playing Joseph. Were Edward's your children son. in the play? My children were not in the play. It would have been inappropriate due to the fact that they don't go to that school. So you went... <laughs> you went to a school where your children are not enrolled, dressed as a woman... Well, <laughs> correct. ..to... 
trick a little boy into thinking you were his mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, when you say it like that, it does sound yeah. a bit dodgy. Let's, let's go back, Lee, let's go back to the beginning. How, how did this come about? How did Edward approach you? So, Edward was, uh, Edward was at the school, and apparently he, he got a phone call off his wife saying that uh, she couldn't make it. Now, his wife had already missed three or four big events. You know, all the big ones that are important, like the sports days and the various things. And this was sort of like, I promise you, I'm going to be there. I promise you I'll do mm. this one. So why, the, why wasn't she there? Well, something to do with work, something got... got, got What's her work? I didn't get a chance to get into too many details. Ed, Edward rang in a panic. Absolutely panic, anyway. What's, what's, what's her job? What's the wife's job? <laughs> yes. I actually don't know his wife very well. But do you no, know him? Well, so, but he, know he, Edward, yeah. You're the first person he'd call, though, but you don't know his... That's right, because okay. me and him do lots of things behind his wife's back, and he knows that... <laughs> so he rang you up? Yeah. And what did he say? He was panicking, though. Lee! I went, what? He said, she's not turned up again. I said, who? He said, my wife. I said, what does she do for a living? He said, not now. <laughs> <laughs> said, he said, I need your help and I need it quickly. Yeah. I said, you know me, I'll always be there for you. He says, I need you to meet me at my house. So I get to the you house, get there. I run in the house, yeah. and he only had time for one phrase. Put this on. <laughs> He said, I need, you to, I need you to dress as my wife, because last time I went to see him in a play, she didn't turn up. And, and, and I said, but you saw me, right? And he said, the kid said, no, I didn't see you, because the spotlights are so bright, you just, everyone's just like a silhouette. So, he said, he said, that's how I think you can get away with this. I want you to dress as my wife, and then when, when he looks out, he'll think that, that you're, you're with me. Did he notice your beard? <laughs> This is the thing. I said that. Now, as luck would have it, I don't know what his wife does, but she has a beard. <laughs> I know she works in a circus. <laughs> I don't know exactly what she does. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> that I was, was very well dodged, Lee. <laughs> I must say. No, she... She, at the time, I did not have a beard. Oh, right? you were clean-shaven. Yes, yeah. which is what, why he was annoyed, cos, like I say, she does. Did you? <laughs> does she have a very distinctive silhouette? She does. I would describe her silhouette as Lee Mac-esque. <laughs> See anyway, I could describe her. Did you have to wear a wig? Uh, no, I, di I didn't wear a wig, cos, luckily, his wife has very short hair. And a beard. And a beard. <laughs> Well, so you just went with your head uh, just went with, shaven, I went, but, yeah. I just went with, with her silhouette look. But and with a hat, <laughs> scarf... But what did hat. you wear? <laughs> <laughs> but you... you haven't told us... Nice one, Jesus! <laughs> you haven't told us what you put on in your friend's so bedroom. he had all... all the things were about... All what? The he, he got a range for you to choose? <laughs> Pick out something nice that you fancy. He had it ready for me when I got there. He said, this is what she would... She, we could get... This is the stuff that the kid would recognise. So we went, we went with a long Macintosh. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's Edward's son called? Edward's son is called uh, Eddie. <laughs> 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 was a bad choice. Yeah, well, well little Ed. <laughs> and then after the, after the play, that lovely bit where the kids mm. excitedly go and meet with their parents again yes, and say, how this, was it? That was the bit how that we were worried about. Daddy? Well, <laughs> I had to do... I, there was only one thing that we could do. I said to him, you're going to have to co totally commit to this. And so we're now married. <laughs> we adopted him and we ran away. And the wife doesn't know where we are and this is the first time she would have known about <laughs> No, we, we, um, we, we actually... We stood at the back, and as he walked towards us, I sort of turned around, walked quickly and sort of waved like that. And he you said, ran away uh, from him? Yes. <laughs> what choice did I have? And apparently, Big Ed said to me afterwards, he said, I just had to say, oh, Mummy's got to get back quickly. She's, uh, she's... Well, I don't know what she does for a living. He didn't know either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need an answer. So, David's team. Is Edward Robert's childhood crush, Denise's car carrier or Lee's... Hoke's husband. Mm. Well, it's... Mm. Well, I mean, Lee, Lee was fairly convincing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hard to see past that, isn't it? What do you think? I feel like when Denise was telling her story, Edward was smiling a little bit more. Look at him. Look at his... See? <laughs> um, gosh, it's difficult, isn't it? I'm tempted to say Robert. Mm. You think Robert? And... I'm really torn. I would say Denise, but I just don't know, cos I was wrong once already. 
Yeah. OK, yeah. time to make a decision, David. Who's it going to be? Oh, right, so you, but you think it's Denise now? If you two think it's Denise, that's great, I can opt out. If you both think it's Robert, that's great, I can opt out. If you both think it's Lee, I'm overruling you. <laughs> We'll go Robert. You're going to say it's Robert. Mm. If this does turn out to be true, you do realise we're about to witness <laughs> quite a moment. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Edward, would you please reveal your true identity? I am Edward, and I am I was Robert's Whoa! inspiration for a password. <laughs> Would you like to say anything to Edward, Robert? I could dress up as you and fill in. I'm trained. <laughs> what would you like to say to him? Here's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yeah, yeah. Hello, Edward. Hi. <laughs> well done, you really kept it together. <laughs> Edward, did you did, did you, you realise that Robert had this crush on you? No, not at all. Oh, oh you must have done. what a lovely evening this is for you! Then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Edward. <laughs> so nice to see you. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, quick fire lies, and we start with it's David. Ten years ago, on this show. I revealed I'd only ever bought one album, Phil Collins, but seriously. <laughs> I'm now pleased to report that I've since doubled my collection. <laughs> Please, team. What's the album? What's the new album? Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's... Well, I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it doesn't say on there. <laughs> It's a... I can't remember the you name can't of it. Remember. You can't remember the name of the only other album you bought. Yeah, I, know, I know the artist. What's the artist? It's, it's, it was Susan Boyles. <laughs> why would you buy a Susan Boyle record? With the greatest of respect to Susan, why would you choose her? Well, because uh, it was, you know, it was much talked about. Yeah. Uh, at the time of its release. And I was <laughs> looking for something to write about. You've not got that journalist job of the NME still, have you, David? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. For the for the Observer. Can you remember the name of any of the songs? Uh, no, I. But wow. These, uh, but wait, <laughs> wait. Um, I could guess a lot of the songs because they weren't. I don't think she'd written the songs. Mm. We were talking they about were it songs earlier. Songs you you said your favourite was "I Dreamed a Dream." Mm. Can, um, you, can you just give us a rendition of that? Can you? <laughs> Sing now or something. I, dream yes, dream. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't think you can because we'd have to pay then, so it'd be inappropriate. So sorry, you he's, a, he's very experienced. So in sorry. TV. That's well, I'll tell you what, David. I, I will tell from you. the best, Tony Verrill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David, I will tell you the names of yeah. some of Susan's album releases or escapes more than releases. <laughs> and you tell me if any of them ring a bell. Okay. Okay. The gift. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> a Wonderful World. I reckon that might have been on there. No, this is the album <laughs> title. Oh, sorry. Uh, the album title? Yes. Was oh, no, the no, album no, title no, 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 The Gift? I, prom I promise you, <laughs> the album world. title is not going to ring a bell. But first because for me, it was the Susan Boyle album. <laughs> OK, you can't remember the name of the album, you can't remember the name of any of the songs. Yeah. Can you remember how I you think... felt listening to it? <laughs> <laughs> I think I, 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 my recollection is I felt it was fine. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> What's it going to be, Lee? Did Trying to guess. You're saying it's uh, no. a lie. I, no, I actually think it's true. It's true. Mm. Yes, I, I'm, I'm with Denise, just about. OK. OK, you're going to say true. True, yeah. OK, true. David, truth or lie? It is true. Wow. <laughs> Yes, it's true. David has indeed doubled his music collection. Next. It's Catherine. I was ticked off by the headmaster after I mistakenly packed a pina colada in my daughter's lunchbox for a school trip. 
Wow. Wow. Oh, what did you what think did you it get? was? What did you think it was? Well, they have these lovely, really lovely, like, frozen packs for the freezer, and you just take them out and squeeze them out. It's like a little frozen, but they really look <laughs> juicy. I thought it was just a little juice. Are you thinking of fruit shoots and things no, like no, that? No, no, no. I'll tell you the name. Do you want to know the brand name of yes, it? Yes, I do. Capri Sun. Oh, the fruit drink in a pouch. Delicious. Love them. <laughs> so why did you think that it was anything else? Because you were the one that bought it. Yeah, because I just buy lots of stuff for the fridge. I just grabbed it because I'm not with it in the morning because I've been having pina coladas the night before. <laughs> What did the person at school? You, you, did you get a telephone call? Were you invited in? No. Oh, I was invited in on that What did they say? Hello, your daughter's drunk. Yeah. No. <laughs> she has six year olds wasted again. Yeah. She didn't drink it. She knew right away what it was. It wasn't for her. Did she report you? Yeah. Oh, she's a grass. She's such a grass. She tells people, my mummy hides wine in the walls. But in that's the walls? A wine rack. Oh, I see. <laughs> but they have a problem with me anyway. Why? Why? They've met well, yeah, they've met me. That's number one. I I do the school run in a in a bathrobe. No. Oh, what? Not one of those. No. Things, really? You go to school in a bathrobe. Yes, because. What have you got under the bathrobe? None of your business. <laughs> So let's talk this through now. You, you've gone into the school. They've called you in to the headmaster or headmistress's office. Mm -hmm. What happens? And they just said, um, I suppose you thought you were being funny. And I said, I'm sorry, what was funny? And they said, you know what you thought was funny. And I said, no, they I really don't They spoke to know. you like that, a parent. Yeah. You should see my fresh look. They think I'm 16. That's the other problem. Who does? <laughs> the, the faculty. How sympathetic know. was this lighting? Was it sort of... <laughs> The... We've been doing this show 11 years. That's the most catty thing that's ever been. <laughs> so, Catherine, he says to you, what do you think you were doing? What happened then? He had the pina colada in his desk drawer and said it's not funny to send your daughter on a school trip with alcohol. Wow. What do you think, truth or lie? I could see her doing it. Yes. I really could see you doing it, Catherine. Thanks. But I think it's a lie. So, basically, you don't think this particular incident is true, but she possibly is an alcoholic. <laughs> I think it's most certainly a lie. OK, well, my team seems to think it's a lie. lie, so we'll say lie. OK, Catherine, truth or lie? Nah, it is a lie. Oh. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Catherine didn't put a pina colada in her daughter's lunchbox. Well, that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. And I can reveal that Lee's team have won by four points to one. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night.